What if I told you that there are three things that most experienced Unity developers know, but they won't tell you, and it's not because they are arrogant and gatekeeping information from you, but because they don't even think about it. It's something they learn by intuition, and when you ask them how do they do it, they'll just say something like, and that's why you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And do not worry about the code too much in this tutorial because my goal is to teach you how to think and not just to follow steps blindly. So let's begin with our first tip. Let's say you are given a task to solve. What most beginners would do, they would jump straight into writing code. But that's something you never want to do. The best approach is to first understand the problem and then you write the code. Every professional coder that I've worked with did this and I recommend that you do the same. And now I'm going to give you a practical example. So here we have a simple problem to solve. We have a player and the goal is to go from start position to the end position. But before we write any code, let's understand our problem first. Let's start at the beginning. What happens? when we press the play button and our application starts. Our player object needs to transform itself to the starting position or spawn position. We can do it manually in the editor, but what happens when we move the start position somewhere else? Our player object will keep spawning at its old position. So instead you want to set your player starting position equal to position of this start position object in the code. So each time you change the starting position, the player will spawn at the exact position. We don't want our player to start moving as soon as the game starts, we need to make it move only when we press a button, in our case a space bar. The next step is to move our player forward. We are going to move it at a constant speed of one unit, but what happens when we move our end position somewhere else? Then our player will just keep moving forward and it will ignore the end position. So we need to find a direction in which our player will move. We used to move it in a forward direction, but now we will need to move it toward the direction of the end position. But what happens once we reach the end position? Our player will keep running past it. So we actually need to stop the player once he reaches the end position. And now let's say we want to test our player again. How would we do it? We would need to stop the game and then run it again. This is quite slow, isn't it? So when we reach the end position, what we want to do instead is to at player position by pressing a space button and that will teleport our player to the start position. This would be the main gameplay loop that we just observed. And now we completely understand what we need to do. We know exactly how to code our problem. If we didn't understand our problem first before writing any code, we would lose way more time. In game development, time is our greatest asset and we want to spend as less as possible time on solving problems. In conclusion, always understand the problem first and then write the code. So let's go with the next tip. Brute force approach is very important in programming. When I was younger, I thought that I need to find the most optimal solution when implementing a new feature. At one of my previous jobs, I was criticized for this because I was wasting too much time on writing perfect code. I learned this lesson the hard way, but you don't have to because you can just subscribe to my YouTube channel. Anyway, a brute force approach refers to solving a programming problem without caring for optimization and best coding practices. The goal is just to make our code run and then we make it better, which we will cover in now one of the next steps. Now let's try to write a brute force solution for our player traveling task. Since we already understand what we need to do, I'm going to give you a list of steps that we need to complete in order to solve our brute force approach. Set player position to position of starting position. Write an input that triggers the player forward once we press a space bar. Find player direction. Move the player in forward direction. Make the player stop once he reaches the destination. Reset player position to start position by pressing a space bar. Now with all these steps visualized, it's much easier to focus on the task. This is way more focused because we know exactly what we need to do. Our brain now has much less stress to delegate. Let's jump straight into the code and solve everything step by step. This is our player class that we will use to move our player object from start position to the end position. Here at the top we have a reference to the start and end positions. Move speed is the actual speed at which our player will move and the default value is 1 unit. Stopping distance threshold is a threshold that is required for our player to stop as he reaches the end position. Is started is a boolean that checks if our player object has started moving. Now let's start with the first step. We need to set our player's current position equal to the start position when the game object starts. We are going to do this in an await method. So whenever we hit the play button, the player will teleport to starting position. In step two, we need to trigger our is started boolean by pressing a spacebar. For simplicity, we will do it in an update loop. Once we press spacebar, 
then our player can move. We will open a condition below and all movement codes we will put inside these brackets. Now our player can move only if this condition here is true. In step 3 we need to find a player facing direction. We know that it has to face the end position so we can write this simple formula and cache it. In step 4 we need to move the player. We already know the direction and now we need to change the player current position facing the end direction multiplied by the speed of one unit. If you want to know what time the delta time is I have a tutorial on my channel that you can watch and learn more about. In step 5 we must stop the player once he reaches the end position. So we need to find the distance between the player position and the end position. Once that distance is smaller than the threshold distance our player will stop. In step 6 we want to reset the player position to starting position. Now let's see how that is going to look in the editor. I will hit the play button and as you can see our player teleported to the starting position. And if you press the space bar the player will move in the direction of the end position and stop once he reaches the target. If you press the spacebar it will go back to the starting position. And if you press the spacebar once again it will repeat the same thing. So we have successfully completed our first task. But the code we wrote using a brute force approach is not looking good. It is all coupled together in a single method and since we care about best practices that will lead us to our next step. This part is very important and every developer must be aware of it. Refactoring means rewriting existing code without affecting functionality. But why would you care, right? It already works. Let me tell you why. In a team setting where you have multiple developers working together, you want your teammates to be able to read and extend your code. Refactoring actually makes your code more readable and scalable. Even if you work on your own project, you don't want to be in a situation where one year later you are not able to read your own code. That is why we are going to refactor our player class. Let's go through the same process as before in step 1. If you look closely, we are breaking a DRY principle here. We are repeating ourselves in two places and it's a habit that we don't want to do. Instead, we will wrap this code into its own method and call it reset position. Place both spots with our new method. In step 2, we are looking to refactor our input code. If you look closely, we are breaking DRY principle again with our press spacebar code. So we will do the same thing we did for the reset position, creating its own method that returns a boolean. At the top, we will remove this code and we don't need it anymore and just call our new method here inside as a condition directly. Don't forget to replace this code here as well. The advantage of doing this is that we are hiding functionality from developers. They know that this will trigger a button, but they don't care which button and how it works. They only care that it works. But if we want to change the key button, we can change it here and it's complete. While previously, if we wanted to do the same, we would need to change it in two places where we would break the DRY principle. Imagine if we had this exact code in 10 other places, then we would need to find all 10 and change it, which is very slow. On steps three and four, we have our code where we find the player's direction and move it. We will extract it into its own method and name it move toward target. Step five is more complex. We will do the same thing very very similar to step 2. We will hide all functionality from developer and wrap it into its own method that returns a boolean. Instead of calling it directly from an update method, we will call it as a condition from here. Even a 5 year old could read what this code is doing here. If is start button pressed and the destination is not reached, we will move toward a target. And if you look at our example in the editor, you will see that the functionality has not changed at all. We only changed our code. That is what refactoring really is and you should take a full advantage of it. We made our code way easier to read and understand. Your teammates will love you for doing these good programming practices. And your code will appear way more professional. And if you are looking to get a job as a game developer in any game development company, then start doing this. In this video I showed you how to approach solving programming problems. With these tips you will be able to solve problems more easily. It will improve your thought process and logical thinking. These are the tips that I wish I had known before but I'm sharing them with you. Let me down in the comments if this video was helpful to you and if there is some video that you would like. See guys don't forget to subscribe as I will make the best Unity content in the world and see you in the next video.